Today we're going to talk about all of the games that I played in June 2021. Let's go. What's up everybody? I'm Gabriel from Board Games and Barbells. If this is your first time joining me, thank you for being here. Happy to see you. For everyone else, I'm glad that you're back. So, it was June 2021 and a pretty good amount of games were played. The first game was Cubitos. Um, this is a game that I've been so excited about, been wanting to play, been wanting to get. Um, and my lovely wife gifted me this for our anniversary and I was excited, I was fired up. But got to play it. Um, it is a dice drafting, full deck dice building game. You were uh, drafting different dice and paying for them and they go into your pool of dice and you're trying to build the best dice pool possible and it's also a push your luck racing game a lot a lot going on there but it is not too heavy of a game or anything like that it's a lot of fun played it at two three and four uh player counts and i lost every time so that's a good game when you have fun and you lose but uh my philosophy did not work out very well. I kept trying to get, to, I had a, a phenomenal pool of dice. The problem was I was taking a long way around trying to win when I should have gone. It's the quickest path, the shortest path. Um, didn't work out for me, but that's okay. So I had a blast playing Cubitos. Then played a, not a newer game, but a new game to me, Karuba the Card Game, which is a cool, uh, pretty simple game, tile laying, pattern building, um, with a little bidding mechanism, which is cool. You got three cards and you pick two to bid. You know, there's a little coin value at the top. And um, if you have the lowest bid, if you have the lowest amount of little coins at the top, you have to get rid of one of your three cards, which makes it tough. Like, you'll never see that card again. Like, discarded, trashed. Um, but really simple game. You were just trying to get your explorers to the temple that they're looking for. But you cannot rotate the tiles like in Carcassonne or a different type of game. Uh, you can't rotate the, the tiles, which makes it challenging. And you're trying to get the most points. I don't know if it's a game that I'm going to play over and over and over again but it's an easy quick one I actually played it with uh, my parents as well so that was fun the next game we played timeline also in the same game night with my parents play timeline a game where you're just you've got events that have happened and you're just creating a tile a timeline and if you get it right you get to keep your card down there and you're trying to get rid of all your cards so if you get it wrong you've got to take another card into your hand and yeah that could be a problem a lot of fun. Uh, my mom won, and I think my wife won. I not went into many games. Um, that's okay. Next, another new game to me, Metro X. Um, it's a flip and write game, and uh, you're trying to create the best subway network. It's a lot of fun, but it can be brutal because you are Xing off circles in the the different subways, the different like routes, but you can only add a certain number of stations to each line. So it might be a very long subway line, but you can only put two uh, numbers there, which makes it difficult. But also the other train routes or the other subway routes go in the same line, they share the same line. It's, it's, a, it's a fun game, but it can, it can just be brutal. The next game, played Railroad Inc., which is a roll and write game. It has some similarities to uh, Metro X because it's got the wipe off boards and stuff like that, which is really cool. Uh, but you're rolling dice. Everybody has the same amount of dice and you gotta make it happen with what you got. And you're trying to build the best and most connections of exits along with the longest uh, highways, the longest railroads, and there's a center nine um, squares that you get points for as well. A lot of fun, but it can be it can be tough. If you get the bad dice rolls, it makes it really hard, but everybody has the same dice rolls, so you're gonna struggle together. Um, but it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. Um, play Deep Sea Adventure, a push your luck game, and it's a lot of fun, but 
I tend to always, so it's a, well, it's a dice rolling, push your luck game. You're going down a like row of treasure. And if you decide to pick up a treasure, it starts the oxygen supply. And every time it's your turn, ticks one away from the oxygen supply. So at the beginning, if no one is picking up treasure, y'all can, you can go, your group can go really deep down, dive deep. But once you start taking treasure, is a race to the finish because however many treasure you have, um, that many oxygen gets taken away along with your dice rolls get subtracted that number too. So if it, you've got two treasure, when you roll a four, you now roll a two. A five turns into a three, so it makes it harder to get out. I typically don't survive and I don't get out and then I don't do too well. But it's simple, it's fun to play with uh, a few people and it's a good time. Uh, next game was Quicks. Another roll and write, quick, simple game. And you are rolling dice. If you're the active player, you get to choose from the colored dice and the white dice. And everyone gets to choose from the white dice. Um, and you are putting numbers down on your sheet. Different rows, like the red row, yellow, green, blue. And some start 12 to two, others start two to 12. And if you, like on that row that's 12 to two, if you start with, let's say a nine, you write that down, you can't go backwards. You can't go to the left and put down a 10 or 11. You have to start there and keep going. So it can be kind of brutal, um, but simple, fun. Uh, I like games that everybody's doing something at the same time. Uh, you know, so if you roll up three with the white dice everyone can use that you know if they choose to so i like that next game we played a uh, role player it's a newer game to me um, and it involves dice rolling dice drafting you're trying to create the perfect hero for a role-playing game and i love that I, like even when i play video games when i was younger creating a character um, I love doing that. So this was really cool, a lot of fun. Um, and so it takes a little bit of luck, but there are ways to mitigate that luck with uh, different special abilities that your role, your role player may have. You're trying to purchase skills, traits, different equipment. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's involved though, and there's so much to think about. It's like, if I put this green, five here that's great but that does not help me um for my different abilities that my my role my player has so it might hurt me here but help me there there's a lot of that min maxing uh going on in that game but it's it's very fun it's a rewarding game then we played skull king which is an individual trick taking game where you are predicting the amount of tricks that you're going to take. So if you're like, hey, I'm going to take three tricks, you have to take that. If you don't take tr three tricks, you're going to go negatives. And yeah, that's not how you're going to win the game. So again, it can be tough because you got to guess and you don't know what the other players have. Different rounds, like round one, you only have one card a piece. Round 10, you got 10 cards. Round five, you got five cards. Um, so you got to kind of figure out who's, who's leading, who's going first. But it's really fun and uh, it usually um, involves some, some laughs and you're like, are you kidding me? If you take this, it actually helps us both out. Like, what are you doing? But anyway, uh, it's a lot of fun. Next we play Cartographers. And um, that is a, another flip and write game where you are drawing little polyomino shapes on a board, on a map, because you're building a map. and depending on what season, there are four seasons, four rounds, depending on what season it is, um, that will be what is scored in that round. So A and B get scored in um, the spring season, the first season, and then B and C, C and D, and then D and A. So everything gets scored twice, um, but you gotta figure out if you're gonna focus on like, you know, there might be some big points later on that you are going to kind of build up as you go. Um, it, there's a lot to think about, but it's also a relaxing game because you're kind of drawing um, your shapes. I don't know. I, I find it very relaxing. Then I got to play one of my 
favorite games, if not my favorite game, and that is Clank in Space. Love this game. So it is a deck building, dungeon crawl, even though it's a spaceship, it's a spaceship crawl, um, push your luck game. And you're trying not to get destroyed by Lord Erraticus. And you're trying to build the perfect deck, a great deck of cards. And you, you need movement to get through the ship because you've got to collect one artifact. But in Clank in Space, you have to visit two modules, two different modules, and drop off a cube in those modules. And you're trying to go through this spaceship, not get destroyed by Lord Eraticus, collect your artifact, and then get out. But see what happens in the game, you create Clank, or you make Clank. It's when you're hanging out in the ship, you hit something and Clank, um, you add a cube to the pool of Clank cubes. Then when a card is flipped that shows Lord Eraticus, Lord Eraticus then attacks everyone. Those clank, those pull of cubes go into a bag and then you pull out the amount of cubes for how far you are along in the game. So the longer you hang out in the ship, uh, the higher chance you are to get knocked out by uh, Lord Eraticus. So there's a lot going on. You don't want to be the first one out because you probably didn't hang out in the ship long enough to get all these different little items, different things that are worth points. But if you hang out too long, you'll get clanked. You'll get destroyed by Lord Eraticus. And if you get knocked out in a certain part of the ship, you lose. You have no chance of winning. If you make it to this one area of the ship, you have a chance of winning, but you're not going to get the extra 20 points in the game. A lot going on, uh, so much fun. It's, uh, love that game, love it so much. I played it at three players and a two player count and it was great, I think I won both. Uh, doesn't matter about winning, it's just a lot of fun. Um, then we played Welcome To. So another flip and write game. Those, those get played a lot in our house. We play a lot of flip and write games. And this one, you are trying to design the most appealing neighborhood uh, by using numbers and actions. So there'll be two car, there'll be six total cards flipped, a grouping, three groups of two, and you have a number and then an action associated with each. So you are trying to possibly fulfill a contract. You are getting points for each action um, that you decide to use along with the numbers. Numbers have to be in uh, ascending order, you know, uh, sequential order. And this one of my favorite uh, roll and write games, if not my favorite, it could be my favorite. Another one of those games where everyone has the same information and you use it to the best of your abilities and whoever uses it the best wins. Um, but it's really cool because you can play with as many people as you want to, solo, solo, or I mean, there's no limit as long as you have enough player sheets. Next, a classic, Castles of Burgundy. So I've had this game for a long time now, and I think it was only the second time I've ever played it. So I was really excited to get that, um, get that played. It involves dice rolling, set collection, tile placement. There's a lot. It's a point salad type game, a lot going on. You're basically... Rolling your dice, you're taking tiles from the main board, putting them on your player board and trying to create like the best estate, trying to create the best area of tiles. Um, but your dice are so important. If you roll a five, but you want what's in the three spot, what can you do? You gotta do something different. Or there are worker tiles to mitigate the, the luck, the dice rolling. Um, so, I mean, there's just so much going on in this game. But it's awesome. It's so much fun. It's also a very fulfilling, rewarding like experience. There are five phases, five rounds per phase. So there's a lot going on. I played it at two players, and I think that's like the, the sweet spot. Um, and we were both love to get as many points as possible. So I wasn't upset about his turn taking a while and my turn taking a while. It's all good. We we're there to have fun. Then uh, we played Rolling Stone, a rock and roll party game, I think is what it's called. Um, it was fun, you know, it's, it's, it's what it is. It's a party game where you are, you, ha you have different artists that you have been given and you have to 
one word. Hopefully your, your team gets the, the clue with one word. Hum it or give, and give the lyrics. You have to do all three. It's a you know, silly game, um, trying to hum Nicki Minaj or <laughs> someone like that. They're artists from 2000s, you know, 1950s and so on. Um, but so a nice wide range and it's funny. It's fun. It's, it's light. Um, but I like it because it gets non-gamers involved and you could be sitting on the couch. And it was a big hit with my family. And last one is a new game to me, a game that I've been really excited about. Um, I got a taste of it last month in May. Um, got to play it for the first time ever, but then I, I went out and got it myself. Um, and it is Unmatched Battle of Legends Volume 1. It is a asymmetrical miniature fighting game. And you just, just a player board and you are just um, moving, maneuvering around the player board and you're trying to take out the other guy, the other uh, hero or villain. Um, the different heroes and villains are, you've got King Arthur and Merlin. That's a sidekick. Uh, the hero is King Arthur, then sidekick is Merlin. You've got Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Um, she has this huge sword with the Jabberwock, Jabberwock as her um, sidekick. The, you have Medusa and the Harpies as her sidekick. And um, you have Sinbad and the Porter as his sidekick. Really fun game. I mean, I want to play it again right now. Let's go. And you are just, like I said, maneuvering around the board. Some heroes use melee attacks. Some have ranged attacks. So you are just maneuvering around the board trying to get your opponent. You can, when they attack, you can defend if you have the card that allows you to defend. It's just so cool because King Arthur plays so different than Medusa and Sinbad and Alice. So everyone has their own asymmetric abilities and you just got to try to maneuver and make it happen and get the win. Sadly, I did not. Both games I lost um, and that was upsetting, but that's okay. It was still so much fun. Um, that, again, that's the making of a good game when you lose and you still have a good time. So there you have it. That was my uh, monthly board game rundown for June 2021. If you enjoyed it, if you liked it, had a good time, please consider subscribing, giving a little like, a little thumbs up. Um, and let me know down in the comments what games you played uh, in June. You don't have to tell me each and every one, but maybe your favorite game that you played in June. And until next time, guys, remember to keep playing games and go get those games.